Hey, welcome again, dear friends, to the Wednesday edition of Fresh Bread. Well, we're at that midway point of the work week anyway. It is Wednesday, January 5th, 2022. Hope you're having a good week. This is Reverend Phil Anderson here, pastor of Oakland United Methodist Church and Kansas Avenue United Methodist Church, welcoming you back to Fresh Bread. And I hope you are sharing this with others. Like I was telling you yesterday, please let people know we're doing this. I really pray that this will touch a lot of people. It's a little bit of effort to do this. Tom Lynn does most of the work, really. I just talk into my phone and I send it on down the line to Brother Tom and Tom puts it on the KUMC.church website and that's really the time consuming part. I still like to find some help for Tom. So maybe that's something this spring and, you know, as we're looking into the next few months, we'll be able to do. I've, I've got that on my to do list to talk about technology at the church. So that's my prayer, my, my plan. Anyway, we're so glad you're here with us today. We're going to just keep looking at our lectionary readings for this week. There's okay. So let's talk about the lectionary real quick. That lectionary is a series of prescribed readings that goes in many churches in years A, B, and C. So there's three years and it kind of rotates through the whole Bible. It goes, uh, the different gospels are, are read each year in, in, uh, one year it's Matthew, one year it's Mark, one year it's Luke, and then John is interspersed throughout all three years. And so, the lectionary on Sundays, you'll find, has a psalm, typically, an Old Testament reading, a New Testament reading, and a gospel reading. Once we get into Advent, sometimes some of the Old Testament readings are kind of pushed aside, to, if you will, and we see then that we are reading uh, from uh, almost exclusively the New Testament as we get closer to the Advent season, the birth of Christ. So that's the story uh, about the lectionary. But there's also lectionary readings, not just for Sundays, that we often go through. And, and we're not obligated to do that, by the way. I mean, the United Methodist Church does utilize it to some degree if we choose to. But it's strictly a choice. Not every Methodist church is going to do it. A lot of them don't. And that's certainly fine as well. But I do like to do it because it keeps me focused and on track with some scripture passages that I may not get into otherwise. So it's a kind of a good discipline for me, especially kind of still starting out in the ministry. And it kind of keeps me focused on the different seasons of the year. And I really think there's meaning behind the seasons if we give them those meanings and we don't make it just a routine or a ritual. Anyway, so the, the lectionary also has readings for each day of the week, Monday through Saturday. In addition to Sunday, of course, uh, the readings for the rest of the week typically start with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They go uh, to the psalm that was read the previous week, and then the last two or three days of the week, it goes to the psalm that's going to be read the following Sunday. And it's typically how it goes. So, I want to read today uh, a gospel passage that's been selected for Wednesday, January 5th, 2022. And it is from one of my favorite chapters in all the Bible, the first chapter of John. It's verses 10 to 18. And the, the whole first chapter of John is phenomenal, but we'll just read what it says here. So it says, the word, that's capital W, the word was in the world, and though God made the world through him, yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believed in him, so he gave them the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means, that is, by being born as the children of a human father. God himself was their father. The word became a human being and, full of grace and truth, lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received as God's only, as, uh, as the father's only son. John spoke about him. He cried out, this is the one I was talking about when I said he came after me, but he is greater than I am because he existed before I was born. Out of the fullness of his grace, he has blessed he has blessed us all, giving us one blessing after another. God gave the law through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only son who is the same as God and is at the Father's side. He has made him known. Well, beautiful passage there about the word being with us. You know, the the beginning of John uh, says that in the beginning, the word, that's again capital W, the, the word was already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. And we know that word is Jesus. So the word became flesh and dwelt among us and the beauty of that is that our savior jesus was also the creator of the world it's it's just a marvelous thing how the creator came into the same world that he created so that he could save the world that he created from its own self-destructive tendencies and his own sin and so we thank jesus for coming into our lives into our world when he didn't have to do it and he saved us just it's a wonderful gift and it's just something we can receive and and, and just say thank you lord 
for giving us that gift of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. Okay, friends, it's five minutes here into the Fresh Bread broadcast for today. We're going to call it for today. Hope you have a great Wednesday. We'll hope to be back in touch with you tomorrow and Thursday for more Fresh Bread. Until then, may God richly bless you is my prayer.